Um, I'm going to present to you our paper that was released, I think, two months ago. So the title of the, um, the paper was Too Early, Too Late, Timeliness of Child Vaccination in the Philippines. So I, I co-wrote this with Ms. Jana Uy, one of our supervising research specialists. Next, please. So before I go on with the presentation, I just want to re um, emphasize that this paper is is a, is, is a part of a bigger project um, of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies with the Department of Health, um, trying to evaluate the performance of the, of the national immunization program. So again, this is just a small piece of, of the pie. So in the next few months, we want to release more um, assessment on, on different domains of the national immunization program, like um, um, supply chain and logistics and the demand side um, um, domains. But this one, I just want to emphasize that we're only looking at um, the performance in terms of coverage and in terms of timeliness. So, so what is vaccination? So vaccination is one of the most important public health intervention in the last, in the last century, I would say. Um, the drastic improvement in, 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 or the drastic decline in infant mortality, the, the improvement or the vast improvement in life expectancy can be attributed to vaccination. Of course, the, there was rapid improvement in, in sanitation and in other med forms of medical technology and, of course, income. But vaccination, if you look at empirical studies, is the main driver of improved health outcomes in the last century. So the the effectiveness and the importance of vaccination should not be, should not be any more, you know, um, we should not debate anymore about the importance of vaccination at this time. So, so around three to five million deaths are prevented because of vaccination. Right? The elimination of smallpox, for example, um, is, a, is a good example of, of um, the importance of vaccination um, in, in, in global public health. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, so just a, be, a brief background about the EPI or the Expanded Program for Immunization in the Philippines. So EPI is one of the major public health programs of the Department of Health. So in 1974, the World Health Organization established the EPI um, calling countries to expand immunization programs. And in 1976, the, the, the Philippines adopted EPI like two years after the WHO um, um, introduced EPI. So, so EPI in the Philippines has a long history. So it's like 40 years. And that is important to, when, when we evaluate the, the, the EPI, we need to, to, to consider the, the history behind the EPI. So the, the long history has you know, um, created a lot of institutional memory and, um, and um, institutional memory and, 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 um, and um, develop the systems within the bureaucracy of the Department of Health. So when, when you want to, to look for reforms, we need to understand that long history of EPI. So, so the, the EPI, the importance of EPI was, was again re-echoed re in, the, in the Republic Act 1015 to, as Ma'am Sheila said, in, of 2011, which mandates the government to actually provide free routine vaccination for 11 diseases. Next slide. So um, I want to go through the implementation arrangement of EPI in the Philippines. In the last 40 years, based on our assessment, there was no drastic changes in how we deliver the program. So um, of course, there was changes in the in in in, in 1991 when we developed the the the, the, the health system, right? But now. The way we implement EPI is in a, is in a highly devolved system, right? So the, the, the Department of Health, which is the central office, serves as the regulatory and advisory body, provide technical support and capacity building to local government. So the central office centrally procures all the vaccine and manages the supply chain and logistics to, to be given to the local government units. So the local government units cover the operational expenses to deliver immunization program 
um, services free of charge at public health facilities. Although, um, uh, if, if you look at if you look at a lot of um, assessment, there were also um, deviations from this. Like for example, the LG will pay for the syringe, etc., and sometimes the national government will also pay for that. So there were like variations over time. But basically, the central office procures the vaccine, and the local governments will basically deliver it in public health facilities. So the EPI is not is not in general are not introduced in private facilities. Meaning, so if you are an individual who wants to go to a private clinic and want to want your child to be vaccinated there, you need to pay out of pocket. So, so that's how it works. So the EPI is only at the public system at this point. Next slide. So, so um, a brief background again on important milestones in EPI in the Philippines. So, um, in 2000, in 2010, um, sorry, in 2000, the Philippines eliminated polio after so many years of of of, of cases, right? And and in 2017, you also eliminated maternal neonatal tetanus. Um, and also one important um, one important milestone is the expansion of, of, of fiscal space for, for the EPI, meaning that the government actually allocated more money in, in the program. So for example, and, and that's because of the syntax law. So in 2012, there was, um, so the government decided to earmark um, um, the revenue, a portion of the uh, tobacco revenues or tax revenues to, to DOH and and the DOH decided to put a lot of, 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 of that resources to, to um, public health programs, including immunization. But currently, um, so one, uh, uh, we are also doing a second round of analysis on this one and uh, we're trying to tease out the, the, the type of spending. So, um, and and what we've noticed is that although the 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 total budget of EPI increased, the budget for routine vaccination, despite the increasing number of children in the Philippines, are not actually increasing. Um, they are actually so the additional budget given to EPI was because the government decided to expand more or to include more vaccines like pneumococcal vaccine. But I think the basic routine vaccination. I mean, if you look at the budget, it um, and, um, it didn't change um, over time. So if, if you do it per capita, you would see maybe also a, a, a declining um, public spending for routine vaccination. But it, those findings will be in the next um, in the next round of evaluation. Next slide. Ne next slide, please. So. So what? So I'm going to discuss two issues on on, on the performance of NIP, right? Or the the immunization program. So the, for me, there are two critical um, um, issues that we need to think about. So number one is that the government, if you look at in the last 25 years, the government has really struggled to maintain vaccination coverage level and to reach medium-term national target of fully immunizing 95% of children, despite the increase in budget, despite you know all the efforts we are really struggling to to sustain high coverage rate so so the, the department of health the target is 95 percent or all children should be fully immunized so 95 percent should be fully immunized but we are really having a hard time reaching that target for some reason and 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 with that the the large declines or the large decline in vaccination coverage over the last 25 years i mean there are it's like a it's like there were waves of increase and decrease, you know, uh, re resulted to to, um, to to some out to outbreaks, right? Like for example, we had polio outbreaks in the last five years, and we, uh, and, and um, also measles. So so it, so the, the the idea there is that the, the 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 vaccination coverage was not really sustained, and the hypothesis there is there's really something wrong with the system, right? The the the, the fundamental um, 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 uh, um, the, the, the fundamental nature of, of the of, of the program. So, so next slide, please. So before I I I, I move forward, 
maybe I I need to elaborate some important concepts of coverage and timeliness. So in, in traditionally, one way to measure the performance of, of a national immunization program is to look at the coverage, right? Like in many countries, the WH or the World Bank uses the coverage rate, right? So how many children are covered, right? Irrespective of, irrespective of immunization schedule. Um, but here we try to look at timeliness, like how timely are we vaccinating our children, right? So the national, the, the Department of Health has this vaccination schedule that you know we need that uh, parents need to abide, right? So we are um, uh, we're also, uh, we, we want to look both both important measure coverage and timeliness. They are interrelated, but they are two different. They're two separate issues. You can have high coverage but low timeliness. So a lot of countries and a lot of empirical work have shown that. Um, Many countries exhibit that kind of that kind of 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 um, duality, right? High coverage but low uh, low timeliness. For example, U.S. Right? So they have high coverage, ninety percent, but timeliness because they want to delay it. So um, they have low timeliness compared to a lot of OECD countries. So the importance of uh, so the importance of looking at um, this is that if if the vaccination is too delayed. The child is more at risk of, of infections, right? And if it's too early, if you look at the empirical studies, um, it will lead to weak or suboptimal immune response. So, so that's the reason why we want to, to look at both measures, coverage and timeliness. Next slide, please. So just to give you, um, just to present the, the vaccination schedule, um, um, from the Department of Health. So these are the vaccines that a child needs to have uh, before the age of one. So I will not go through it, but basically, um, 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 it's, yeah, so so there's BCG, Hep B, Pentavalent, OPV, IPV, PCV, MCV, and MMR, uh, trying to trying to uh, avert all these, uh, of, all, all these kinds of diseases. Okay. So next slide, please. So what is the objective of the study? So the objective of, of the study is to examine the immunization coverage and the extent of timely vaccination among children aged 12 to 24 months in the last 25 years from 1993 to 2017 for the following basic vaccine considered to be part of routine basic vaccination for children. So BCG, uh, OPV for polio, DPT, diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus, and measles. So, so as I've said a while ago, um, there, are, um, there are other parts of vaccine included in the EPI, but we did not analyze, we did not include that in the analysis. We just wanted to focus on the routine child vaccination. Next slide. So yeah, so some definitions of terms. So what is co coverage? So coverage is the proportion of children age 24 who were immunized with each vaccine. So we'll have coverage for each type of vaccine as reported in their vaccination cards or as reported by mother's recall, regardless of timing of immunization. So again, we do, we do not consider the timing of immunization. So when you say vac basic vaccination coverage, these are these is your, the proportion of children age 12 to 24 months who were recorded or reported by mothers to have received all the eight, eight doses of the basic, basic routine child vaccination. Next, please. So when, when you say timeliness, so this immunization was considered timely if a child received the vaccine according to national immunization schedule. Um, recommended age range age for the vaccine and dose. So these are the, the the vaccine and the recommended age. So these are the recommended age of administration. So for example, BCG, you need to give the child before before two, two weeks after birth, right? So OPV one from six to eight weeks. From OPV two, it should be given from ten weeks to sixteen weeks, etc.
So next slide, please. So, so basically the methodology here is we, we just pulled the national, the, the national demographic and health survey um, from 1993 to 2017 and examined the, the age cohort. So we also use kaplan mayer method or a, a kind of survival model to look at the cumulative coverage rates, um, which I will present later on. But I will not go through the method anymore. Um, um, but next slide, please. So here are like some of the results. Um, here, um, so using the National Demographic and Health Survey, we, we tried to, to, to to calculate the coverage rate by by cohort year. Um, so we look at BCG, OPV1 coverage, DPT1 coverage, DP3 missiles, then OPV complete. So for the OPV complete, if you have three of the OPV doses, and 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 I want to I want you to focus on the basic vaccination, which is all doses of routine child vaccination. So so one of the things that we need to see here is that. Um, so we have a 95% target, so we haven't reached that. So, so if you look at the basic vaccination, you would see that there was really an, an unsustained growth. So there was an erratic growth, I would say. So the highest, the highest, the highest peak um, was in 2016 when the basic vaccination coverage was around 80%, more than 83%. Um, but after that, there was already a declining um, trend in, in in basic vaccination and. Uh, we've already started to, to, to do some key informant interviews to, 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 to understand what happened in the system. And um, I, think, I, don't, I don't think I, 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 we haven't really published the paper, but in the next paper, we will I try to explain why there was a systemic decline in 26, 2006 to until 2014, right? So, so um, and, what, and the most interesting thing here is that the, the, the vaccination coverage for at least for I mean for basic vaccination, um, the lowest the lowest point was in 2014. So, so uh, this is also very alarming to us that the decline was really, even there was um, there there was some demand side um, problems like uh, vaccine hesitancy. But in 2014, you would there was already rap like you know um, very significant decline. So again, um, we, we also did a lot of of, of team formats to actually investigate what happened to even before the demand side um, problem. Um, in twenty fourteen, there was a recovery in twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen, but when you look at the data again in twenty seventeen, using other sources. There was really a decline again in 2016 and 2017 and, and, and 2018. And yeah, so for 2020, you would expect large decline, like a super large decline because of the, of the pandemic. So um, again, it will be a trend, I mean, sustained growth in, in the next. The whole day, even for the for the whole decade. So next slide. Val, hello. Val, we lost you. There seems to be um, so, okay. a connection. So this is the vaccine. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We lost you for a while. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. So, so this is the vaccination coverage. This is the vaccination coverage by region. And sorry for because it's a bit small, but I think the the idea here, the or the intuition here, is that you would see like like all like almost all regions have declining trend. Um, using the latest survey, um, I mean, for example, Soxergen has a very alarming decline. Um, ARM is also declining. Yeah, this is population from strategy associates, but it's just really a capsule to whatever Naga needs help with. 
Hello? Yeah, so, and like regions like Western Visayas also registered large decline. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Val, we can we can hear you. Okay. So someone messaged me that it's a bit unclear, but yeah. So yeah, so that's the vaccination coverage by region. So just 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 be mindful about the large declines in almost all regions. Um next slide. So yeah, um it's also important to benchmark our country or I mean our performance with other countries. So here, apparently, if you look at low-income low countries, it's actually the coverage rate for low-income countries, at least for DPT3, is actually higher than the Philippines. So I, we went global. So just global average, you would see that you know the, glo the global coverage for DPT3 is a bit sustained, but the DPT3 in the Philippines, you would see you know erratic decline. I mean erratic trend. And in 2018, you would see large drop again in the coverage of DPT-3, one of the basic routine vaccination. Next slide. Like how, how about we, if we compare ourselves, it's, I always want to compare ourselves to other countries. Um, what if we compare it to, to our regional peers in, in ASEAN? So you would see here that successful countries like Thailand, Singapore, and Malaysia have a sustained growth in the DPT-3 coverage rate, right? But in the Philippines, you would see, again, an erratic trend to the point that in 2018, you would see that we're now in the lowest in the region. Where, like, countries like Laos, for example, or Laos or Cambodia would have a better immunization coverage rates. I mean, despite the, the, the lower... Um, GNI per capita. Next slide. So, so let's go to the timeliness, right? So we calculated the timeliness and um, like, let's go with BCG. So here, so what, what's telling us here is that in, in, in BCG, at least for BC, the coverage rate for BCG, right, around 90% of children are vaccinated with BCG but only 64% of them are, are timely. Um, about 34% are late. Next slide. Um, but if you go to other forms of, of, of vaccination, you would also see large, um, like for example, um, the coverage rate for OP OPV in 2017 is 87, but only 13, 40% of them are timely. Um, yeah. Next, OPV2. With same thing here. So, so the coverage of OPV, we see that the, the coverage rate is high. I mean, relatively high, 85%, but 61% only are timely, 81% uh, um, only timely vaccinated. And DPT, same here. Um, as 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 you as you go with 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 the second or third dose, the coverage obviously will decline, um, but the timeliness um, will will also increase. So, so the coverage rate of OPV is around seventy eight percent, but sixty six percent are like only sixty six percent or sixty seven percent are timely. Um, next for DPT one. So yeah, so the coverage rate for DPT one is eighty six. Only 37% like untimely, sorry, 38%. So DPT3, so I didn't include DPT2, but for DPT3, you also see the same pattern. Paul, hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, okay. That's the DP3. So that's the coverage rate is 78% or 79% in 2017. 
but the timeliness is only 64%. I mean, 64% are, are, are timely. Next, next slide. So this is basically the coverage rate using Kaplan Meyer. Um, you would see. So I, I think I want to emphasize the red. So the the red line. So and the bar. The two bars are the recommended age. Age, right? So. So you would see that a lot of children are not vaccinated on time, right? basing on on, 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 on on that on that red line. Um, and if you look at if you look at it over time, right, like there was no improvement in 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 in, in coverage rates, except at least for BCG, you would see that there was an increasing num increasing coverage rates um, within the recommended age. But for for most vaccines, you would not see any improvement in 2017. Next slide, please. I think to summarize that um, in, a, in, a, in a very simple terms, so so the basic vaccination in the Philippines is 69%. Like so, if they have all the routine child vaccination, um, um, they completed all the doses around 70%, right? But of that, only 10% are actually timely. So they have basic and all timely vaccination around 10%. So. Um, and to us, I think that is very, very, very small. Next slide. So we also tried to examine the vaccination coverage over time. And what is alarming here is that, like, if you look at all socioeconomic status, you would see a declining trend. So from the bottom 60%, from the middle 20%, even from the top um, in 20, from 2013 to 2017 survey years. What is interesting here is that even the top 20% are actually, like if you look at the, the, the rate of decline in among the richest households, you would see like super large decline compared to at least bottom 20, bottom 60 or bottom 20, middle 20%. So again, this this is an important hypothesis of what's really driving why, why even the richest I mean, the rich segment of the population has low coverage rate or declining coverage rate next slide please So yeah, so we also examine the the place of immunization because I, I when I was discussing a while ago that most of the EBI are only in the public system. Um, um, because to us it's very alarming that if you look at other health other other interventions, so other interventions other health interventions you will see large gradient meaning that uh, for example uh, iron right iron utilization you would see large large difference between the rich and the poor um, in terms of utilization in pub private or public facility so our hypothesis here is why even the richest quintile are actually using the public system except for you know other other um, other vaccines like OPV yes or DPT3 but if you compare to other health, other um, like for example iron, you would see large, this larger, larger, larger gradient or variation. So yeah, so if, if you look at BCG, majority, majority of majority of majority of children are getting their shots in in in, in public system, right? Um, Despite the increasing private, increasing you know uh, stock of private facilities, so um, we are we are still getting it from the public system. Next slide. So, 
So I just want to like summarize the result is that so in the last 25 years, basic vaccination coverage has never reached 95 percent. So which is our actually target. So the highest peak for basic vaccination was in 2006. The lowest peak was in 2014. So the lowest in 25 years. So unlike in other countries uh, where there's sustained sustained growth in coverage, we, um, there's a character, um, the, the coverage is over time in the Philippines is characterized by large fluctuations. So um, um, it's, it's it's quite unstable over time. And again, it boils down to, again, looking at um, the the system that currently we have, right? That we haven't really changed since the inception of the API. So I think the next goal, really, of this evaluation is to really look at what yung hindi natin ginagawa that lead to, like, unstable coverage rate. Um, are there really something wrong on how... how how, how we deliver the supplies, etc., to for us to see the, these fluctuations, right? Because any disruptions in the supply side, you would see like drastic decline, right? If, if you would see if there is failed bidding, for example, you would see again like, like this year, you would see large decline. So the, the, I think that the idea there is how do we make sure that there is the system in place is also sustainable and predictable to ensure that coverage rate is actually sustainable. So those questions will be, I think, can, on, can only be answered by thoroughly examining, um, um, you know, through key informant interviews or through examining um, um, financial data or supply, uh, supply chain data, which we're trying to do in the next, um, next round for analysis. So I think the instability of, of the coverage rate is very, very alarming, the unpredictability. Next. So depending on the vaccine, um, only 38 to 65% of immunized children had timely administration within the recommended age range of the nationalization schedule. So only percent, only 11% with basic timely vaccination. And if you compare this to other countries, this is a bit low. Um, we, we, we try to look for other countries. Um, next slide, please. Um, to at least compare timeliness, um, um, the problem is that um, studies on vaccine timeliness of vaccination is, is still is still growing. Like only few st only few studies have con I mean only few researchers have conducted this. So when we did like some big uh, review, we found this. Like for example, in in Kenya, the timeliness of vaccination for for BCG is 80 hours is 65, right? Like those things. So you would see that comparing to others, um, countries, our the level of timeliness is actually very low um, when you at least compare to other countries. The problem is there is no uh, benchmark um, on, on, on timeliness, although the empirical studies are growing, but there is no, um, no benchmark yet on when to say, okay, you're untimely. Of course, there are also debate that um, on, on catching up vaccination and things like that. But to us, it's important that the timeliness is an important measure of supply side issues. Next slide. So again, um, another important finding is that although the different immunization coverage are large, um, the, the timeliness the timeliness between the poorest and the richest is not actually very significant. And the hypothesis there is that um, because the EPI is, is driven mainly by the public system, um, that's why you wouldn't see large inequality, right? Like, um, and, and although it needs, it still needs to be evaluated, but, but those are our hypotheses why there is really like 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 smaller gradient compared to other health services like iron or or diarrhea diarrhea services etc where you would see large super large variation between the, the rich and the poor between the use of public and private system but in vaccination you don't, you don't see that large variation so next 
So yeah, um, in, 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 in the succeeding rounds of, of the evaluation for the National Immunization Program, we are trying to evaluate these different domains. So, so as I've, the, the one I presented looks at the coverage and timeliness, but um, in order for us to really understand what's really driving these two important, um, um, important uh, variables, uh, can be supply side or 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 demand side issues, um, which we are trying to. I mean, in the next rounds, we are trying to complete all this, trying to come up with a a, a more comprehensive picture of the national immunization program. Um, next slide. Next slide, please. So um, in terms of recommendation, it's really hard to make recommendations because we want to have a complete or com more comprehensive understanding. But I think the important lessons here, general lessons that we need to understand that EPI should aim for both high immunization and timely administration of vaccine. Um, now, we are only focusing on, if you look at, for example, the National Objectives for Health, it's always coverage. But I think it's timely to examine the timeliness of administration of vaccine. Some countries have started doing that. Um, um, and I think it's also important to um, start looking at some large invested in reform, health system reforms, and how we deliver, how we finance, and how we govern the, the, the vaccination program in the Philippines. Um, um, I think the UHC started to um, think about on how we really, on how do we, what, what are the path-breaking reforms to actually um, 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 like unshackle the old ways of delivering and financing um, the program. So um, I think we've started to, to discuss this with the Department of Health. Um, 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 but I don't know what will happen because of the pandemic, but I think there were already options on how do we really shift the, sh the, shift the system to change on how we finance and how do we deliver API in the, in the country. And the third one is that I think we also need to think about expanding the API to the private facility as, 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 as an important conduit or channel for delivering um, um, immunization programs. So I've seen a while ago, we, most of the, the way we do things is in the public system. And I think that is fine, but I think we are actually losing an important avenue or conduit or channel to deliver the, the, the the, the the vaccination program because because as I've, as I've shown a while ago even the richest quintile is actually suffering from large decline in in vaccination coverage and to us it can be both demand and supply side issues right um, um, one of the one of the findings for example is that even in, in private clinics vaccines are very very expensive that even the richest quintile cannot even you know, cannot even, or the middle class cannot even, you know, um, cannot even, uh, cannot, cannot, you know, uh, um, cannot um, pay for it. So I think those things are the general recommendation at this point. Uh, Val, hello. Hi, Val. Val? We uh, lost our uh, speaker, but I think that's already his ultimate slide, right? Val, hello. Yeah. Um, okay, that was actually already his um, his his last slide. Um, we will again call our speaker once. Yeah, he he already joined us. Hello. 
Yes, Val, Hello, we sorry. lost you. We lost you. So, sorry. So those are the three rec general recommendations. And I hope as we move forward, um, so I hope as we move forward, I hope um, um, we get some insights from 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 the audience as we as we as we move forward with the with, with the next chapter for, for, for the evaluation. And um, because also the Department of Health is also very um, excited, I guess, to, um, to receive our recommendations and how do we really move or how do we move the system to, um, to um, you know, um, improve vaccination coverage. I, I don't think the way we do things is, is the way we need, we really need to change it. And I think when we when I say we need to change it, like it needs a lot of like overhaul on how we finance and you know deliver it, and how we involve the private sector in in in, in, in the in the picture. Right? So um, yeah, so in the next few rounds of this, I mean the next few chapter, I guess in the, in the evaluation, we will have a more comprehensive um, assessment when we examine other domains of the program. Thank you.